All right, so again, welcome back. And for anyone who can't see their screen, who might be calling in on a phone today, just to let you know uh, audibly there, you are in the Human Resources Corporate Learning and Development panel at 10 a.m. So thank you for joining us. We're thrilled that you're here today. So to welcome you back briefly, um, I'm going to give a very brief introduction of the content that we'll cover today and then uh, introduce our wonderful um, moderator for the session. So welcome to Learning and Development panel. And we're really excited to have this particular topic covered today. In the spirit of Cradle to Career Pipelines, which is a focus here, we're thrilled to include expert discussion on developing talent at work. When we consider the future of education, the future of work, and the future of social equity, we must understand not only how to prepare, but how to ensure that lifelong learning is a reality within our places of business. These three dynamic leaders are shaping talent development in our new COVID landscape. Because they've worked together before, we're pleased they're sharing their expertise in a highly conversational uh, panel with you today. And just a reminder for housekeeping, as with other sessions, feel free to go ahead and post comments in the chat box, you know, kind of keep it lively, conversational, keep the energy flowing. And then if you have questions, please go ahead and post those specifically in the Q&A box. We'll be moderating those and making sure that they get attended to today. This session will run until 10.45 a.m. Pacific time, in case you're logging in from uh, a different coast. And then please follow the session link that you will receive in, um, that you've received in your email, I should say, and that you'll go ahead and receive in the chat box as well in order to join us in the closing uh, keynote plenary session. All right, so on to the good part. Without further ado, I'm thrilled to invite to the floor our moderator for this session, Global Human Resources Leader, Jenny Dearborn. Jenny, the floor is yours, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I have been a Chief Learning Officer at uh, five different global technology companies. I'm currently Chief People Officer at Clavio, based in Boston. Um, and I'm super excited to um, have a lively conversation with two friends and colleagues that I've known for many, many years. Uh, Kelly Ryder, who is the Chief Learning Officer at PTC. Uh, she and I work together at Hewlett Packard, Success Factors, and SAP. And Lauren Fernandez, who is the Chief Learning Officer at Flexport. She and I work together with Kelly at Success Factors and SAP. Um, <clears throat> and we're just going to jump uh, right in. Kelly, do you want to uh, say some a bit more of an introduction about you before I ask some questions? And then also to Lauren. Kelly, any, anything you want to sure. share about PTC? Sure, yeah. So I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado. And as Jenny mentioned, I took over as the first chief learning officer at PTC, which is based in Boston. Um, so for me, entering a company, um, as a virtual employee was was nothing new because I've been working remotely for the past 14 years. But what drew me to work at PTC is, is they have really um, advanced next generation technology that's being used for um, making products and manufacturing much more intelligent and interesting. And I wanted to bring that experience internally for learning and development. So that's my charter, that's my vision, and, and I'm just getting started. Awesome, that's so great. Lauren, you want to give us some thoughts about you, about a bit more of introduction about you and Flexport? Sure, absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Lauren. I work at Flexport. I'm based uh, here in San Francisco. I've been at Flexport since uh, October of last year. We work in global supply chain and logistics, and uh, we are considered a unicorn. We're a fast-growing startup, and um, I am so excited to share a little bit more about what we're doing on the L&D side. Awesome. That is so cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kelly, I'm going to start with you. Let's just jump in. Um, what, what role do you think L&D plays in transitioning the workforce to our new work environment? And do you have any advice that you want to give to organizations who are really dependent on learning and development in the office? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time for us, obviously. Um, back in March, I think lots of companies didn't think that 
uh, you could work remotely, that it, that it was just a grand experiment, uh, that work had to happen in an office. And I think that on the flip side, they're also learning that you don't have to learn in a classroom, that you can actually help and enable people regardless of where they're sitting as long as they have access to an internet. And so I think you know, one of the first things that we were, we've been trying to do is really to help set expectations and drive the change toward you know, the next generation learning experience. And I think it's a great opportunity for corporations who can more easily move into a virtual digital experience uh, to start t having those uh, conversations with stakeholders, with employees that you know, learning isn't gonna, you don't have to wait for learning to come to you in a classroom. You, you can be learning continuously um, all the time and we can enable them as learning and development professionals through you know, up and coming and, and pervasive technologies that are out there. Um, I think the other one is you know, really making sure that we are focused on the uh, really specific business goals of the organization and not adding more um, to, the, to the environment to, to confuse people, like too much noise. I think it's being really strategic about what types of initiatives you're going to be focused on because especially during this time right now, there's lots of things coming out for wellness. There's lots of things coming out for health and, and people are struggling with, you know, their home office environments if they're still at home with shared spaces or, or with their children or with, you know, whatever kind of environment that they're in. So I think it's making sure that you're really focused on the big rocks and making and, and just bringing those to the table. And then lastly, I think it's, um, looking at changing your investment strategy. So if your 2021 plans included, you know, high touch in-person instructor led programs, or you were looking at potentially building a brick and mortar university or academy, um, I would really look hard at taking those investments and putting them into some of the really cool technology that's coming out that can scale much, much faster than, than any of us humans. And I think, you know, for me, it's, it's um, you know, it's a sad time, but it's also a really, great catalyst for change. And I, I do think L&D is at the forefront for, you know, kind of setting the example of what it can be. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are great uh, strategies and tips. Um, Lauren, do you want to add some color commentary um, to that um, idea of what L&D is doing to uh, what role we're playing in transitioning the workforce to this new work environment? Absolutely. Um, so starting at Flexport uh, end of last year, um, we set a lot of big L&D goals for ourselves for 2020. Um, we built out our team charter, our strategic plan, we got our budget in line, we're all excited. Totally, and, totally yeah, ready to go. Ready to go. Um, and March hits and I'm on a plane um, going to New York. We had planned to do an in-person, our very first leadership development program at Flexport. So we're a new team. They haven't had L&D before. We're all excited. And um, I'm mid-air and I get a slack from our CEO saying, what are we going to do? We're all going remote tomorrow. How is L&D going to save the day? Um, so a lot of pressure, um, but obviously we were excited to adapt and, and really show our company, even though we're a new team, we're a new function, we can adapt and just rise to the occasion. So we went back to the drawing board and uh, we said, all right, for a leadership development program, we still wanna build a really great engaging experience. So we did a, a flipped classroom approach. Essentially what we did was we built out a five week uh, leadership development program where leaders across the globe can interact with each other, network, um, share stories and still learn the content and we met an hour each week with the cohort um, to really still build that leadership development program in a virtual environment. Um, the other thing that we planned um, is we usually have, uh, we call it our Flexport Academy. It's a one week onboarding experience for all of our new hires. We fly all of our new hires to headquarters in San Francisco. They get an opportunity to meet our CEO in person, all of our executives, 
and they get to create their initial network with other new hires like themselves. Um, unfortunately, we had to move that to the virtual environment. But fortunately, we are still able to run our Fluxport Academy and still build that engagement, ex engaging experience for our new hires and get them excited about joining Fluxport. So it's been a crazy, wild roller coaster for us. But um, I really think that 2020 is the L&D year. And to Kelly's point earlier, really leveraging the skills and the technology that we know so well in L&D and just making it happen and adapting to this new world. Um, can you say a bit more, uh, Lauren, about uh, transitioning the workforce to the new environment for um, more senior um, employees that have more years of experience and then, you know, kind of middle career or, or super junior right out of college? Like, how are different age groups adapting to mm -hmm. learning and development and Kelly jump in on this also you know I, you know different learning styles different pr comfort levels with technology you know comfortable being in front of a screen all day not comfortable and you know they, they've just have completely different styles and approaches and how how have we how have you tackled that yeah so for us for the more uh, senior employees um, they this was not um, it was a fairly easy transition because similar to a lot of employees, um, you know, that have been in their careers for a while, they've worked at companies where it's allowed them to work in a remote environment. Kelly, I know you've been working in a remote environment for some time. For our younger employees that are straight out of, out of university, this was a really big transition for them and something that they needed to, um, to learn how to do. Um, so what we did was we really held their hand and offered them a lot of learning opportunities to understand how to work in this new environment. Um, and we had a lot of remote sessions on um, how to work with your team, how to run meetings that are engaging, how to facilitate conversations. This, these are a lot of new skills, especially for these young folks that came out of university where they're in a dorm face to face with their friends and they go to class and, you know, and, and now we have to create this like fun, engaging environment online for them. Um, so that was a, a big transition for us, but, and we're still learning um today mm -hmm. yeah I, I would jump in and again i've been at ptc for just a couple months but it was a very headquarter driven company where lots of decisions were made in person um and so i think the transition has been a little tougher to be honest because i think people expected that you could sit in a room read some, you know read the body language read the expressions that people are having and you know, be able to collaborate and make decisions quickly. And now it's like, I have meetings back to back to back to back, it seems like, because people are so used to having that opportunity to just be in, a, in an environment where you can ask questions very quickly. And I think it's, so it's been a little different. I think, um, honestly, the, our CEO, Jim Heppelman, really didn't know if this experiment was going to work. And um, I think that he's been pleasantly surprised with how people are adjusting. But I think you know, as many people um, are experiencing, there's, there's major Zoom fatigue right now. And that, that we really need to train people on how to take that time off, how to build breaks into your schedule, to give yourself time to think and actually do your job. And also to give them skills to, um, you know, how to engage your team, how to engage your audience if you're speaking, how to be able to communicate. So I think that's, I think Jenny, that's one of the things I, I think for, for many people um, in the organization, it's, it's about helping them and, and L&D giving them kind of those skills and tool sets and guidance in terms of kind of protecting their wellness and also, you know, how they can be, you know, how they can thrive in a, in a virtual environment. Yeah. You know, Kelly, that's a great transition to another question that I have about what, what are some of the ways in which corporate learning and development can drive equity in the workplace? Do you yeah. have any any pointers on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for many people, everyone was put uh, at home uh, back in March. Um, and so for some, like for myself, who's worked 14 years virtual, it was, it was a very natural, <laughs> easy thing, right? Because that's my normal, um, sadly. Um, but I think for a lot of people, they didn't have that same 
experience. They, they were in a house that potentially was shared um, with others or they have children um, and they didn't have a private space that they could go and, and actually do their work. So I think, you know, from a level playing field, in some cases, most people were starting on a very similar uh, starting point, which was you're at home, you, you may not have been set up for it, but um, suddenly everyone's at the same, at the same point, uh, starting point. So I think some of the things that we've been doing is um, looking at, instead of delivering things in person, which people were very, very used to, is looking at how we can leverage our existing third-party content providers. So like LinkedIn Learning is one of ours, O'Reilly, and being able to package those and, and curate those and give those to people and let that be the delivery mechanism um, so that everybody has access to that. So that's one of the things um, that we're really trying to do. One of the things I'm trying to do is, is just to get it out there to let people know you can continue to learn and grow. Um, and it's not... Um, you know, it's not just for people who are, who are in an environment, who are in an office environment. Um, some of the other things that we're focused on are looking at how do we move talent across the organization. So now that we don't have this limitation of boundaries and we can access anyone in the organization, how can we, you know, increase talent mobility and, and find maybe those diamonds in the rough that, you know, hadn't been seen before because they weren't physically sitting in a location where someone would be looking at them or able to observe their performance, you know, in person. Um, so talent mobility for us, I think, is, is really going to drive some equity here where we can, um, you know, again, find people that can move from one business to another without ever having to leave, you know, their, their office. And then lastly, I've been, uh, since, we, since I have worked at home for so long, um, I'm kind of a consultant right now to our benefits organization and giving them insights in terms of, you know, what are some of the things that, that I need and that I've been using over the course of the many years that I've been at home to help me, you know, build high performing teams and have engagement. And, um, you know, what are some of the benefits that I would look for? I would love to have subsidized um, internet, for example. I'd love to have, I've just bought a standing desk, which I'm at right now. So um, I think, you know, being an advocate for employees, um, L&D has a good um, opportunity to, to, to push that for driving a more equitable experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Lauren, thoughts on how L and D drives uh, equity and equality in the in the workplace in times like this and and in general? Yeah, absolutely. So what we started with at Flexport is educating our executives and our managers that everybody in their at home environment is different. Some people live with roommates. Some people share rooms with people. Some people, you know, have kids that they're also trying to wrangle and, and help educate while they're at at-home school as well. And so for us, it was having our executives and our managers understand that everybody's at-home work environment is going to be different. So being flexible with people's schedules, being flexible, you know, with, with meetings and, and ensuring that people aren't on back-to-back -back meetings because they might have kids at home that they have to take care of. So we first started educating people um, just about understanding um, and just being empathetic to each other um, as well. Um, to Kelly's point, we also uh, launched LinkedIn Learning. So we pushed that out in April for all of our employees globally. Um, and we were very, um, uh, we had a targeted approach when it came to really educating people about this new uh, remote work environment. So we launched a, a few LinkedIn learning paths that focused on how to manage your team virtually, how to, um, for the, the younger folks that are transitioning to this new work environment, this is their first job out of college, they didn't think it was going to be at home in their pajamas, um, is really understanding, well, how do I, you know, how do I remain productive um, and focus on my wellness when I have a lot of these Zoom meetings? Um, so that was really a big focus for us. And uh, something else that we've done is staying in touch with our employee base. So we use CultureAmp for our engagement, our employee engagement survey tool. 
and um, every couple of months, so once a quarter, we do a pulse survey. So this pulse survey is just a check-in in our global employee base to understand where people are at, how people are feeling. Do people feel like in this re uh, remote work environment that they can still develop their career at Flexport, that they can still grow their skill set? And so we've been really heavily monitoring our employees to make sure that we're in touch with them and what they need. Um, from our last poll survey, we noticed that a lot of folks were looking for more career development opportunities. They wanted someone to talk to them about developing their skill set from now until the end of the year. So we just launched on Monday, actually, of this week, a platform called Bravely. Bravely is a professional coaching platform. Their business model is about equitable access to coaching for all employees. So prior to launching Bravely, we were leveraging BetterUp. And BetterUp is great as well, but it's very, it was for us, it was a targeted strategy. Let's target very specific managers. So it was very much a have and have nots. And there were a lot of have nots of coaching at Flexport. Now we've totally flipped that on our head on its head and said, look, let's give every single employee a their own professional coach through a platform that believes that everybody should have access to a coach. And we have uh, over 30% of our employee base that has already booked their first coaching session with a coach. So we've really, really uh, given our employees what they're looking for right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that you mentioned um, staying connected um, with employees, so incredibly important. We know uh, the research from psychological safety research in the work environment that if you don't feel um, safe or, you, um, you know, if your mental health is compromised in any way at all, the learning shuts down. Um, and, you know, it is impossible to perform. So it's almost like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, you know, someone can come to you, your executive can come to you and say, you know, put in a training class. You're like, okay, but if there's no foundation to build that on, the, you, you know, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time and you're, you're burning trust bridges with your organization. You first need to start it like, are they feeling comfortable in a place where they could learn? Okay, let's address that, you know, and then you can sort, you know, okay, now, they, now they're emotionally ready to learn. Do they, do they know how to run a team meeting remotely? Um, do remote performance reviews, give feedback remote, um, you know, be able to measure goals and uh, performance calibration remotely. Um, do they even know how to learn remotely? Um, and these are the things that are coming on the shoulders of L&D. It's no surprise, even significantly before the uh, uh, pandemic. So in 2019, the most um, downloaded course on Coursera was learn how to learn, right? So how to learn remotely was where everybody started before they started their online uh, their online learning journey. So um, these are incredibly important. And there were lots and lots of companies, very successful brand name companies, you know, Google and others who, when pan pandemic started, they just went immediately to learning and development and said, you guys are responsible now. You know, we, we <laughs> you know, uh, Lauren and, and Kelly and I know a lot of people that are over there right now. And their primary responsibility is, how to manage a remote team, how to give remote feedback, how to, you know, how, how to be a remote leader. Like these are absolutely incredible foundational things that people are struggling with. Thank you for that. So those are super great pointers. Um, Kelly, I'm going to jump back to you. Tell me, um, uh, how can employees feel like they're being included, right? So we talked about equity, but let's talk about inclusion and belonging, right? So how can you, how can learning and development foster inclusion and belonging when we're physically distant? Yeah. Uh, what are you guys doing for that? Yeah, I think this is one of the hardest right now because people really crave the connection and the visibility and exposure um, within an office environment. I know that some of the programs that I came in and took over, a lot of the charm was being able to sit down with the CEO and have dinner or to be able to, you know, connect with higher level executives that they didn't have access to. And, and a lot of our training, as I mentioned, was, was done in person. And so I think people really are almost like grieving because they don't have that 
opportunity to connect with one another. And I, I think most people are probably pretty burned out with Zoom by the end of the day. I think we started off with like happy hours and crazy hat day. And, and then now it's like, oh my gosh, if I have to get on another Zoom call, I'm, I'm done, you know, for the day. So I think that's um, something that we all need to, to think about in terms of how you do still continue to, to connect people and, and bring them in. Um, some of the things that we're doing is, is trying to reduce the amount of time that we're delivering content to people, as I mentioned, using LinkedIn. And then, but following that on with more focused learning circles um, and opportunities for people to connect and um, work on a business challenge together and do that in a virtual environment that is a lot more collaborative and brings people together from across the organization. So that's one thing that we're starting to put in more is, you know, we're not going to come and deliver content to you. We expect you to go through this content, um, you know, on your own. And then when you've completed that, then you can come down into this learning circle so that we can practice give feedback and give people opportunity to, again, work together. Um, the other thing that I'm really excited about is, um, as with many companies, we're looking at unconscious bias and creating inclusive environments. Um, so we're gonna be piloting uh, virtual reality uh, this year, which is an immersive experience where we can get people in an environment where they're you know, uh, working or they're, they're involved in these situations where they're feeling like they're connected or in an environment and they're seeing their behavior and, and kind of catching their behavior. But we're going to pilot that and then we're going to look at using that for our onboarding. So I anticipate that we're not going to get out of this, you know, anytime soon. So how do, like what Lauren was saying, how do you give people a great onboarding experience and get them excited about working for your company when, when they can't physically be there? And so that's one of the things that I think for us, you know, investing in virtual reality, um, giving us an opportunity to simulate as if people were walking into the environment, walking into the office, taking the elevator ride up, potentially talking to our CEO as they go. Um, I think there's some really creative things that we can do to, to get people, I don't know, the sensation, I guess, of feeling like they are actually sitting um, in an office location using virtual labs. Um, so so that, that's the next gen thing for us that I'm, that I'm really excited about for this year. That's so cool. Um, Lauren, thoughts about uh, inclusion and belonging when we're physically distant? What are some of the things that L&D can do to help with that? Yeah, um, so we recently launched a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging LinkedIn learning path. Um, and we have asked all of our employees and managers alike to go through that LinkedIn learning path. Um, and for each of our general managers, for each of our global offices, they are taking upon themselves to run learning circles with their employees and have open, uh, transparent conversations in a psychologically safe environment. So this has been a, a really big focus for us um, as of the last couple of months. And it's been really a game changer for a lot of employees um, just to feel like they can be open and be transparent with their managers and with executives. Um, another thing that we're doing as well is we are leveraging our ERGs or our employee resource groups um, to build out more virtual um, events that are focused on topics that people want to learn more about um, specific to the ERG that they're or their employee resource group that they're a part of. So we've really been relying on our ERGs to build that uh, inclusion and belonging culture at Flexport. Um, and then lastly, and this has been something we've been running for a while, but we have a lot of Slack groups. Um, so we're a heavy, heavily uh, use Slack at Flexport. And we have a lot of Slack groups and some of them are specific to managers. And some of them, um, we have an uh, ask exec Slack group. So to allow people to be able to have access to our executives in this virtual environment, um, people are asking our executive teams all the time questions about our business, questions about remote working, questions about anything and everything. And that's really been a, a game changer for our virtual culture now as well. That's really important. You said ERGs, just in case people don't know that acronym, that's Employee Resource Group. Maybe you said it. Um, 
But, uh, and so an ERG at a company is typically something that is um, employee led, like bubbled up from uh, grassroots from the employee. And it could be an LGBTQ group. It could be a professional women's network. It could be uh, people that love to salsa dance. It could be, um, you know, um, uh, LGBTQ. I said that it could be a. Little we little have actually we have one that's really cool. It's uh, to support parents, yeah. and that one's been taking off like crazy, especially as you can imagine now. So that is uh, a really cool ERG group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or it could be the Black Employee Network, uh, yeah. Latinos at SAP, Latinos at Clavio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so these are. Um, ERGs are employee groups um, that employees get together and create a network. And then the corporation says, well, here's an executive sponsor and here's a budget. Um, and what does your group want to do? Um, and how can we help your group advance their needs, their aims, their goals? Um, so that's typically how it works. Um, and, um, but at the same time, you also want, the corporation needs to step up and take responsibility for the issues um, that these groups are raising, right? So it is the responsibility of human resources or your people operations group um, to say, okay, the Black Employee Network, they've raised these issues we need to address them as a corporation, right? We can't just say, okay, Black Employee Network, you guys solve this on behalf of the company. That's not fair. That's not fair to put on the shoulders of the people that are in that group how to solve the challenges of that group. Um, so it is uh, super important that the corporation, and learning and development is a big part of this because L and D, it often falls to L and D to drive educational programs for these different ERGs and to the rest of the company about the ERG issues. So for the LGBTQ group, it's important that learning and development says to the rest of the company, this is what's important to all of us at this company about respect and tolerance and celebrating differences, things like that. These are the issues of the group and we all need to get better um, to make this more an inclusive, equal uh, uh, culture uh, um, where people feel like they belong. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let's, uh, let's go to some questions from our uh, audience here. Um, so a question from Andrew, do you use boot camps or retreats to focus your training for your staff? Um, either of you wanna jump in and how do you do that and how do you do it normally and how do you do it during COVID? Lauren, um, do you wanna I, go? <laughs> yeah, sure, I can start. Um, so we do use boot camps. Um, we, have boot, we have a sales boot camp. We have a enablement boot camp. Um, we have a finance boot camp, and so what we've done, again, used to be in person. Now, what we've done is we've had, uh, or we have a blended approach. So we have uh, some virtual live sessions for our boot camps for our employees, as well as um, we just launched our global learning management system called 360 Learning. And the cool thing about this platform is we're really encouraging our employees to not only be learners, but also be teachers as well. So we have a lot of our employees now creating courses um, in areas that they're an expert in. And a lot of these on-demand courses that they're developing are then brought out to a wider, uh, wider audience um, in some of our boot camps that we offer for our employees. Yeah. Um, I just want to add to that point, uh, Kelly, before I throw the boot camp question to you. So um, you, you talked about employees that are um, uh, sort of leaders as teachers um, and super important uh, in all the time, but in especially times like this, the best thing that you can do um, for your organization is facilitate uh, service, right? So um, tons of research out there that one of the best things to make us feel better um, it is to give to others. And so really learning and development uh, should never be a service organization where people just come and say, 
uh, they want to order something and then you say, would you like to have fries with that? And how, okay, I, I'd like to order five classes. Okay, I have $10,000 or if you can buy two classes, right? So we're not order takers. We are very strategic business partners. And when the organization comes to us and said, X, we have XYZ need, um, it is uh, imperative for learning and development professionals to say the best way to address this need is this particular path, this intervention, this service project, this mentoring program, you know, this webinar, this technology, et cetera. Um, it's, you know, we do not take the order, you know, someone says, I'd like to buy seven classrooms worth of seven habits of highly effective people. And we're gonna say, mm, interesting, what business problem are you trying to solve? Um, let me recommend the best way to do that. And so in times like this, some of the best ways is giving. Um, being a mentor, being a coach, um, <clears throat> doing a service project in your community is going to be one of the best ways to facilitate a learning experience uh, for your employees. So really important all the time, but especially important right now. Um, Kelly, do you have any thoughts? Do you want to jump in on the boot camp question? Is there yeah, I think, um, you know, we're not offering retreats, but we, uh, we have partnered with a company. Again, I think it's based in um, Boston, Kripalu, and they do wellness and meditation. And it's, I think it's one of the top in the nation. And we are starting to offer that for people. Um, it, so it's not focus on work necessarily, but focus on mindfulness and, and your own wellness. And then I think within PTC, it, we don't call them boot camps. I think they're called academies. So um, there are several that have basically have had to go virtual overnight. But what I'm seeing is that they're being much more strategic about how they distribute content and roll content out. And other groups are using um, rotations within their boot camps or within their academies to say, okay, you may be um, an inside sales rep for six weeks and then you're going to rotate over here to, you know, an account executive role and then you're going to rotate over here to be, you know, this next level, this next highest level. So they can do that a little bit easier now um, virtually because they don't have to fly everybody to Barcelona, which is where our, our location is. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Thank you, Kelly. There's a very cool question about uh, technology. So what is some of the cool, you know, we say things like, there's so much cool tech out there. Um, can we be a little bit more specific? So what are some of the, uh, briefly, let's list some of the, um, the technology that we're using in L&D um, uh, that's hot, cool, effective, uh, drives business impact, etc. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm starting from scratch here um, at PTC. Uh, so we're looking at a learning experience platform. We're evaluating ways that we can connect people to lots of different uh, sources internally. So Degreed is one that, that we have our eye on right now. Um, Lauren mentioned uh, the mentoring uh, Bravely and Better Up, which I think if there's a better way to scale, um, you know, mentorship and coaching to people that doesn't rely on internal resources, that's, that's an amazing uh, thing to look at. Um, I'm also evaluating um, a vendor called BTS, which has simulations, so business simulations, where you can put people again into kind of immersive experiences where they're basically running Salesforce. Um, for us, we're, we're transforming from on-premise to SaaS, and that, that's a whole new game for many people who are not used to it. So business BTS simulations. Is remote? Are they, are they able to do the remote part? Yeah, okay. All of it's remote. Yeah, okay. all of it is remote. So that, that for me is really exciting. Um, there's also a really small company that I'm looking at in Germany called Presire, and they are an AI uh, machine learning communication coach. So you call in and you answer a series of questions, and after that you get a diagnostic on how you, um, how you inflect, how you tone, how you, uh, the words that you use. So it's a, it is your own personalized coach that gives you feedback. Communications coach. Communications coach. Yep. Yep. And then it gives you recommendations for um, areas that you can improve and you can take it over and over and over again until you, until you nail it. So again, I think, it, you know, there's, there's just some really great ways that technology can scale that we can't, you know, cause we can't be everywhere at every time. Um, so those are just a few top of mind that I'm, sure. that I'm looking at. Lauren, do you want to add to that list? That's a great yeah. list. Yeah, absolutely. So again, uh, Better Up and Bravely are, are two coaching platforms. Um, in September, we'll be leveraging Workday's uh, mentorship plugin. 
um, to allow mentees to write their profile, to allow mentors to write their profile and start doing some matching. So we'll be piloting a mentorship program leveraging Workday. Um, we also leverage Slack. Um, Slack has some really, really cool plugins. So um, we use something called Donut in Slack and it automatically pairs people for virtual coffees. So if you decide to say, hey, I want to have a virtual coffee and build my network, you can sign up for Donut and um, every month it will pair you up with someone in the organization. It syncs directly to your calendar. So just in Donut, you could uh, book a virtual coffee with somebody. Um, Slack also um, is great because it has a lot of polling functionality. Um, we do private Slack channels, public Slack channels. Um, so that's something fun as well that we're leveraging. Um, we use Culture Amp for our employee engagement uh, survey. Um, we also use uh, more in our benefits area, but if someone's more focused on teletherapy, we use an app called Ginger and it's all on um, your phone. So it's just uh, through a chat. So that's also really cool as well. Um, and then in regards to actually building content. Um, so I'd mentioned 360 Learning. It's a LMS slash learning experience platform. So it's a combo, which is great. And the authoring tools, you can create courses in the platform. You don't need uh, any fancy content authoring tool outside of it. So I have my head of finance and my CEO in our platform actually building courses really, really easily. Um, we use Prezi as well. So I just built a course off of Prezi. Um, so we're leveraging that as well. We're just trying to use um, really easy tools to allow us to build content fast in a scalable way. And it's really all hands on deck. Jenny, you made a great point earlier. We are not order takers. We are facilitators of great learning. And um, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly's in the in the chat function spelling things for us which we appreciate very much prezi is great plural site is great that's those are both true um kelly can you spell you were asked in persire someone had asked um can you spell persire and i put it i put the website link in there okay yeah, cool. lauren's adding more um, yeah. yeah all right um and um uh, Udemy and uh, Coursera, yep, Coursera, EDX. Those um, are good for the big, um, you know, sort of full stack uh, MOOCs, right? So those, the bigger, longer, heavier um, programs, those are really excellent. Um, yeah. Actually, um, in this week's Economist, uh, the cover of this week's Economist is the, is all about higher education. And, and ha what is happening to um, corporate education, I should have brought my magazine, corporate education and um, higher education around the world and how the pandemic is changing that. It is a fascinating read. I really, really would encourage everybody who's interested in education to read the cover article of this week's Economist. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot that uh, we can leverage in corporate L&D from uh, the very sad implosion that is happening in universities worldwide. Um, so um, we are at the end of our time. So I will thank everyone um, <clears throat> for joining us today. Uh, feel free to reach out to um, any of the three of us on uh, LinkedIn and keep the conversation going, ask additional questions. We will be in the networking session uh, later. Um, and so I think at this point we will end our session and have you go back into the plenary session. Somebody from Silicon Valley Leadership Group is going to play you now. No problem. Thank you so much to our amazing panelists today. I was riveted. I actually almost lost track of time. That would have been bad. So I really appreciate your time today and an extra special thank you to Global HR leader Jenny Dearborn for leading this amazing conversation and assembling these other incredible leaders for us today. And as she just noted, uh, please do join us for the closing plenary session. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation between another two leaders. The, those links uh, are both in your program and will also be dropped into the chat box uh, as well. So 
please go ahead and follow us over there. We'll see you in just a moment. Thank you so much.